What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Living Free channel. My name is Tyler Freed and I'm with Pedro again. Uh, we are making another video, doing another update of how our week has gone this week and what's going on with us and how much longer he will be on my truck and kind of addressing a few of the comments too that have been made on a couple of the videos that we've done together. But uh, yeah, so, so far this week, um, well, we're about to hit 3,600 miles for the week. Not the greatest week. Uh, running a semi-team operation like we've been doing the last two weeks. But we ran into some uh, slowdowns. Uh, the first load we got this week actually took, what, like 10 hours to get loaded? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, about 10 hours to get loaded out of Dallas going to Chicago. And then we had to wait like half a day to deliver in Chicago because it was an appointment time and the appointment couldn't get moved up a day so that's pretty much what happened and uh, we ran into some bad weather up north like heavy rain and all that and, uh, but we still ended the week pretty good for all of the slowdowns that we had but uh, yeah still not bad 3600 miles uh, are you happy with that even though it's been kind of a bad week or what? No, man, that sucks <laughs> Team yeah. driver, you should make like 5,000 miles. Yeah, we, we, we should have hit like five. And uh, freight was kind of slow, to be honest, this week uh, in the areas that we were at. So it was a dispatcher. We, we had a different yeah. dispatcher. We had a weekend dispatcher. Right. right. So our, our current, well, his current dispatcher went on vacation. So that's, yeah. that's what caused the shortage of miles for us. So. Right, yeah. See, because at Millis, like I always tell people, you know, they're really not set up for a full-blown team operation, but a lot of the loads are like a thousand miles and it's drop and hook on both ends. So the loads like that, you can actually do a team operation because it's a drop and hook, right? You can deliver any time. But this, and we were trying to tell the dispatcher uh, that we had filling in for my actual dispatcher that was on vacation. We tried to tell them, hey, we're running a team operation, so give us loads with open schedules, right? To where we can drop and hook. Don't put us on loads with appointments to where we have to wait on it. Well, they didn't really get that picture. So they kind of screwed us on those loads. But uh, I mean, still 3,600 miles getting paid on all miles still ends up being a very good week, but we could have got minimum an extra thousand miles uh, had they really been paying attention to what we were trying to do. Like our main dispatcher, he already knows all about that and how we've been wanting to run it. So uh, yeah, so next week we'll be having a much better week than we just had because he will be back in. So um, I didn't yeah. come complain because I mean, for being a slow week, I still grossed like 15, almost 1600 bucks. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So still really good. I can't complain. Yeah. I'm not trying to get greedy here, but <laughs> I am trying to push though. Right. Yeah, because we're out here, we want to make as much money as we can. Um, he's to the point now, like I said, where I'm confident in how he does the job and everything. So, like, he's almost ready to go on his own. He really is ready to go on his own. He just has, like, 2,000 more miles to do, and he's done with the training. So he's at the point to where he's ready to go solo, but we're just kind of maximizing the rest of my time out on the road before he switches over to Heartland Express. And uh, so we got, what, a week and a half left? At that? Yeah. yeah, a week and a half left after we finish this weekend. You'll be seeing this video uh, on a Monday. But uh, yeah, a week and a half. So we're gonna try to hit 5,000 miles next week and to finish up his time out here with me. And then you switch immediately over to Heartland and then, uh, yeah, I'll be having another student coming out who will also be making videos with me. Uncle Mike. Yeah, Uncle Mike. He watches our videos. But, uh, yeah, he will be coming out with me after my home time. And me and him are going to do, like, two and a half weeks because he only has, like, four or 5,000 miles left of training. So I'll be doing videos with my new student after Pedro. And they were in the same class. Uh, so that'll be cool. Yeah, I'm just kind of giving an update of like what's going on with me, uh, how we've been doing, and uh, but things are pretty good. It's a beautiful day right now. We're in North Carolina, headed to Virginia, and then we get a load out of Virginia back down to Southern Georgia, and that's where we will finish the week off and uh, 
start on our next week uh, on Monday. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to try to aim to hit 5,000 miles next week and really kill it. So we will be sharing that, uh, that experience with you uh, the last week and do a review uh, of his last week with me out here uh, before he gets into his own truck. So, um, but yeah, so how do you feel now? Like, how do you feel like your progression has been? It's like learning stick shifts. Yeah. Like, you feel more and more confident backing, dropping hook, yep. securing loads, doing all that, right? Yeah. Um, it's kind of confusing at first, following your directions when, you know, when I first started, like, how to back into an alley, like, between, you know, spots, tight spots. But uh, after a couple times, you know, you start understanding and seeing things, you know, as an experience driver. So it comes like a second nature, like stick shift. Um, so, I mean, I do have my moments where I got to stop, question myself, get out and look, you know, and then yeah. catch myself and realize, like, right, I, I got to reposition myself. Happened already once, um, but pretty good, pretty confident. Yeah. So, so are, are you happy with the kind of money we've made in the last, like, three weeks? Do you, is it what you expected us to do, or... Like, did you really feel like... I didn't expect anybody to want a team drive okay. during training. Right. So, the, the amount of money I'm making now is, is a help. Yep. It's, it's going to be a help for a lot of you guys if you find a driver or a trainer that's going to want to team with you and if you're willing to push forward. So, money's out there, man. So if you want to make the move, do it. Otherwise, you can work construction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to quit and let all the old guys do the trucking. Uh, I'm not 50 years old, so I'm gonna quit and stop making really good money so that I can work in construction. And that's not a shot at anybody that's in construction, but somebody made a comment saying that all the young guys should quit trucking and go into construction and leave trucking up to the old guys. Well, if we do that, our economy is gonna absolutely stop <laughs> because we're gonna lose a lot of truck drivers. So not very smart uh, comment there, but uh, it is what it is. People make dumb comments all the time. And, uh, but most of the comments are positive and I appreciate those um, yeah so I just we just had to address that I thought that was funny um, that uh, only hey, only old people should drive trucks so <laughs> yeah. I mean the way I see it is we should all work together right yes yeah, so young guys have more enthusiasts is that more they're more enthusiastic they're, they have more en en energy they they're more they're more clear-minded. I mean, I know the more experienced guys, older guys, I've noticed you have the handful that are very nice, humble, and they're willing to take their time and they're very patient. Then you got the other experienced guys that just kind of want to blast down freaking Mount Eagle, you know, at 80 miles an hour, all the confidence in the world, right. and just screw everybody else. And, you know, we all got to work together at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. It's, people getting into this is either a temporary thing or it's a, it's a new career path for them to make Right. A life-changing decision, you know, right. to make good income. So it's like, we should all help one another. And, and what I really believe is young people should look at trucking as a career because it's a great opportunity for a young person. If you're 21, if you start trucking at 21 and bank all the money that you can bank. Six figures at 21. Yeah, you, yeah, you make like 70 plus a year starting out at 21. If you could save thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year away and do that for like ten years, you'd be a millionaire if you invested it right. You, you could become a millionaire in ten years in your early thirties. Um, but if you're an older person too, get into trucking. There's no like, there's no like age restriction as long as you can pass the DOT physical, you can get into trucking. So we're not knocking older people. We're not knocking younger people. We believe that young people can do it. Older people can do it. Anybody can do it. You just have to have to have the right mindset. Now, one thing I have noticed though is like me and him were talking about teaming before he got his license. And something you have to understand is he's willing. Like if you're going to come train with me, which a lot of people have asked, hey, can I come train with you? Yeah, you can. But don't think it's going to be easy to hit four plus thousand miles a week. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of work. You're not going to get your beauty sleep. I yeah, tell you that you're much. not going to get your beauty sleep every night. 
you're not going to be able to stop and eat normal meals. You're like you're going to eat at different times a day, every day. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. But you can make this kind of money when you get your CDL with your trainer. And if you're somebody looking at becoming a trainer, you can make a ton of money being a trainer. Now, again, training is not only for the money. You have to make sure that you're actually teaching your student how to do the job and how to do it safely, right? For the first couple weeks I was out here with him, as good of a driver as he is, like he's more of a natural driver than a lot of people, I still wouldn't be fully confident in doing a full-blown team the first couple weeks. But after like three, four weeks, it's 100%. They're ready to pretty much drive on their own. I can go back in the bunk and sleep when we're on the highway. I don't really worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's so, how we've been rotating too, right. stretching our, our days out. So, you know, while I'm on duty, he's right. hanging out or he's sleeping, and then he takes over after my hours are out. Right. And we keep the loads just moving. Yep. We just keep it moving. Yeah. yeah it, it's and, and like if we get tired, we'll we'll just say, hey, let's chill on this load, take it easy, and just run it like a solo run and not really stress on getting there. Like we did that yesterday. So, and we still ended up with a great week. And like, there's so many benefits to doing this because even if we don't run a full blown team to where we're just like nonstop, you still never have to stop the truck ever for a reset. And that's something that I really love about doing the training. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's been really good. It's been really good. I'm glad that he's able to make the kind of money that he's been making. And if he brings that same work ethic to when he gets his own truck, because he'll be making a lot higher rate per mile. And if he runs this hard when he's solo, he's gonna do really, really well in the long term. And that goes for everybody though. Like if you're looking at trucking, all I know is you can make a lot of money in this business, but you've gotta be willing to do the work, okay? If you're not willing to hustle, you're gonna make average money. If you're not willing to stay out and you're not willing to run hard, right? That's a, that's a, and, and that's, that's like the worst feeling ever. Making yeah. average money while you're out on the road for like five, six, right. seven days. You know, it's like, yeah. you're going to do that. You might as well just stay at home and get a nine to five. You get me? So, I mean, the, it, it's, it's all up for grabs pretty much on the road. So, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, it, it, it tells you a lot about yourself if you're not hitting uh, the numbers you want to hit tells you a lot about yourself. You can't be lazy in trucking if you want to do really well, okay? No two drivers make the same amount of money at, at all. They may get paid the exact same cent per mile or percentage, but no two drivers make the exact same amount of money, right? So that's just the way it is. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we wanted to talk about and uh, just kind of give an update, like I said. But uh, yeah, those of you uh, that are new to the channel that clicked on the video, uh, I appreciate you for clicking on the video. I would appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out some more of my other videos that will be popping up at the end of this one. Uh, go click on the link in the description to my Instagram. Follow me there. I'll follow you back. And then, uh, yeah, those of you that are already subscribed, once again, thank you uh, for being uh, a viewer of my channel and supporting me. Uh, you are really appreciated. So, uh, but yeah, we will be making another video before he leaves, uh, kind of talking about an overall review of the training uh, and of his uh, process uh, from start to finish, from the school all the way through the training into getting his own truck. We'll, we'll do that. I'm also thinking maybe for the next video, we should kind of get all the like, more experienced drivers to kind of discuss like, what are the diets like? What do they cook? Why right, do they like making? That. Yeah, yeah. We'll because do me being on my new truck, mm -hmm. I have no clue what appliances to buy. I know I'm gonna get a coffee maker, right? Maybe a toaster oven. I don't know, but I want to hear from you guys. You know, meal prep. You know, like yeah. share in the comments. Let us know, like, hey, here's a little life life tip or whatever. I could go on Reddit and find out myself, but I want to hear from the actual viewers, right. and we can discuss it and share it with everybody else in the next video. And yep. go from there. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, because we can we can do one on how to eat healthy out here. I mean, I did a video about that a while back, but uh, we could do another one. You know, it's kind of hard. Um, and and uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of hard.
hard to eat healthy out here. Well, it, it's a lot harder the way we're doing it, just because we don't have time to stop. We don't have time to stop the way we're running it, right? But when you're solo, you got a 10 hour break every night. You, uh, you got a 30 minute break, you can cook then too. Um, yeah, so we can talk about that though in another video if you want to do that. Sure. And uh, so we'll, maybe we'll do that. And then uh, we'll also post a video about the overall experience that he's had and uh, how confident he is after the training and everything. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. But uh, like I said, thank you for watching. God bless. Peace out. I think that video dragged.